As regions and cities grow, new sets of challenges emerge that require new solutions. That's where the Wellington Regional Leadership Committee comes in. The committee is a union of iwi and local and central government in the Wairarapa, Wellington, Horefanua region, formed to create a platform for collaboration and collective decision making to positively shape the future of our region. We've joined forces to collectively address our regional challenges, to improve existing communities, and develop new communities to be places we can all live, work, and thrive. It's June 2022, and we're nearly at the end of year one of our work program. We are proud to share with you the story of our work to date. Our projects are designed to address one or more of our five interdependent key areas of focus. Housing supply, transport, iwi and Māori housing and capacity, climate change, and economic development. We'll first share the spatial or localised projects, which all fit within our regional context. The second set of projects are region-wide projects. Let's explore our first spatial project, the Ōtaki Pilot Project. Kia ora, ko Rochelle toko ingoa, and my mahi is leading the project to develop guidance and a toolkit for whānau wanting to develop papakāinga as part of the Ōtaki Pilot Project in the Wellington Regional Leadership Committee's work programme. This project is designed to empower whānau in establishing papakāinga on their whenua which in turn will address the lack of adequate, affordable housing for whānau with a specific focus on te ao Māori. The project will help whānau to have a roadmap for the development of their papakāinga, whānau to have tools, skills to access information about their whenua without the need to engage consultants, whānau to access, maintain and retain knowledge about their whenua. Whānau will have control to determine how their papakāinga development journey proceeds, including who, how, and when to engage with consultants and government agencies. And finally, the project will help Fano to know how to access funding for papakāinga development. Whilst this project seeks to specifically help Fano Māori and Ōtaki, the project has a broader reach in that the final product can be adapted to other regions and applied by Fano around the motu. The primary outcomes will ensure that Fano Māori are able to deliver housing fit for their purpose in a Māori-led housing response. Let's now look at one of our structure planning projects, the Levin Taitoko Structure Plan. Kia ora tato. The Levin Taitoko Structure Plan is being delivered by the Horofanua District Council. My name's Mark Bailey. I'm an urban planner and partner at Boffermiskel. The plan covers the Levin Taitoko urban area and surrounds. We're developing the structure plan from a people-centric point of view. Its focus is to pave the way for a future that meets people's needs for living, social infrastructure, transport options, green and public spaces. Benefits to the community include a new business park and new places to enable more people to work locally with a wider range of skill sets. New housing choices in a wider range of living environments through strategic site developments and strategic rezonings. A street space reallocated to support and encourage walking, scootering and cycling to reduce short car trips, reduce carbon emissions and increase equity of travel mode options. A commuter rail stop strategically placed and provisioned for customer experience. A focus in the plan on cultural identity, the unique natural environment and local pride in a vital horticultural industry. And all through a partnership approach with Mana Whenua to build a positive relationship between Levin's urban centre and Punahou, Lake Horofenua. The big challenge for this project is getting the influencers, which include all of you, to commit resources to support this plan and all its benefits. Yet that same challenge is also the biggest opportunity. Everyone benefits from an integrated approach to our region's future growth. The integrated approach has seen all the regional influencers, Kāinga Ora, Ministry of Education, Waka Kotahi, Kiwi Rail, Regional Councils and Mana Whenua agree to the plan's objectives and to start to develop the plan. The actions that come out of this process will provide a clear pathway forward and a clear spatial vision for the future. A thriving Taitoko Levin is our aim. Thanks for playing your part in our hitting the mark. A second structure planning project is at an early stage in another part of our region. Let's hear about the Lower Hut Structure Plan, Te Mahere Topu. The Lower Hut Structure Plan, or the uh, Te Mahere Topu as we've called it, is really trying to achieve a clear vision for how, why and where we develop the city. 
We hope that the project will bring economic vitality to people, um, that mana whenua identities and values are up front and centre, both in terms of how we develop the plan, but also in, in the ultimate plan outcomes. Uh, and, and we're also one of the most vulnerable cities in the country, given the, um, the sinking foreshore and the, and the sea level rise issues. So our urban form does need to discourage carbon emission and encourage adaptation and where possible mitigation. So the way that we want to produce the plan is through deep uh, citizen and community engagement and decision making. So really trying to experiment and explore methods that put community voices at the lead in terms of a decision making process. But in terms of the outcomes, we hope that ultimately we will be producing a city that respects its natural environment, but also ensures that there's, an, there's opportunities for all people, whoever they are, um, to have good access to employment, health opportunities, education and so on. But the big opportunity I see is, is enhancing mana whenua identities and also to really trying to embed a system of community engagement that privileges community voices. One of the key longer term spatial projects in the Wellington Regional Growth Framework is the West East Investigation. This project explores creating connection between the West and East of our region, which includes new housing and resilience opportunities. The Wellington West East Connections Program Business Case will investigate improved transport options crossing our region. We are looking at future links from Northern Wellington and Porirua in the West to the Hutt Valley in the East. The current West East connections are limited, restricting access for people and products. They don't provide a good choice of ways to travel, with no real alternatives to driving on the existing roads. The network today also isn't resilient when disruption occurs, whether from small events like crashes and slips, or from the major natural hazards that face our region. We'll be investigating potential multimodal links to address these problems. Our objectives are improving access for freight, providing a range of transport choices, unlocking new housing and business areas, and increasing resilience of the transport network from the Nauranga Gorge through to State Highway 58. Our work will integrate with other work being done by Waka Kotahi and the councils in the region, including other infrastructure projects and planning for future growth areas. We'll draw on the work we've done in the past, like the Petoni to Granada project, as we investigate possible solutions. We expect to start this work on the West East Connections program business case later this year. Our first regional wide project focuses on housing supply as a critical issue in this region. To address this, let's talk about the Regional Housing Action Plan. Kia ora The Regional Housing Action Plan, or RAP, was developed by a steering group made up of Wellington Regional Leadership Committee partner organisations and others involved in providing housing in the region. The REP covers the whole Wellington Wairarapa Horofenua area and was approved by the Leadership Committee in March 2022. The ultimate objectives of this plan in the longer term are to increase housing supply and improve housing affordability and choice and to encourage sustainable, resilient and affordable settlement patterns that use existing infrastructure and resources efficiently. In the short term, being the next five years, this project focuses on what can be done to accelerate housing delivery with all parties working smarter together and implementing ideas that might be successful in one council area across the region. Some of the benefits of this plan to the community include better coordination between agencies to streamline processes for everyone working on housing issues. Our Leadership Committee website will be a one-stop shop for all housing-related data and information. The big challenge for this project is getting our region's decision makers, which includes all of you, to commit resources to support the implementation of this plan and all its benefits. That same challenge is also the biggest opportunity. Everyone benefits from an integrated, coordinated approach to our region's future growth. The actions that come out of this plan provide a clear pathway forward and a clear housing vision for this region's future. 
which is everyone in Aotearoa, New Zealand lives in a home and within a community that meets their needs and aspirations. We are also looking at housing supply, transport and climate change through the alignment of the Wellington Regional Growth Framework and Regional Policy Statement. We have the Wellington Regional Growth Framework, which is a long-term plan with a vision for managing growth and challenges for the best outcomes. But it is a non-regulatory document, so how do we ensure it happens? Greater Wellington is leading this project, which includes updating the Regional Policy Statement and gives the Growth Framework more regulatory teeth. In August 2022, we will notify changes to the Regional Policy Statement for public consultation. The Regional Policy Statement is an RMA instrument that sets out how we manage natural and physical resources, and it gives direction to the Regional Plan, District Plans, and the Regional Land Transport Plan. The changes will focus on implementing national direction and helping enable urban development while protecting our waterways, responding to the climate emergency and protecting Indigenous ecosystems. The changes will also help us put in place recommendations from Whaitua committees. These committees are groups of local people tasked with recommending ways to improve the quality of our fresh water. The changes address four significant environmental issues the lack of urban development capacity, impacts of climate change, loss and degradation of indigenous biodiversity, and the degradation of fresh water. We'll also deepen integration of Te Ao Māori and Mātauranga Māori in decision-making, governance, and implementation. Changing our regional policy statement will ensure we have robust and fit-for-purpose direction for how regional, city, and district councils manage the environment. Let's now turn to our Iwi Capacity and Capability project, where we are looking to identify, then implement, long-term sustainable solutions to increase Iwi capacity and capability in our region. Kia ora koutou. The Wellington Regional Leadership Committee is intended to represent a true partnership between central government, local government and Iwi. The ability of Iwi partners to participate in all aspects of the committee is, as we all know, limited by capacity and capability issues, particularly for pre-settlement iwi. This is the challenge that the iwi capacity and capability project is designed to address. So we decided to develop a project to look at what we might be able to do to build capability and capacity in a long-term sustainable manner. Iwi-specific challenges identified in the scoping report included a multi-generational interest in succession and growing future leaders, attracting and engaging rangatahi, finding ways to engage Pākeke and Komatua, supporting those iwi members with extensive operational experience into management and governance level activities, and trying to attract often skilled iwi members home as a number lived outside their rohe. With the support of all leadership committee partners, the biggest opportunities are to implement work placements of up to 12 months in host organisations, fixed term secondments of technical or systems experts from central government or local government into iwi organisations to provide capacity and capability such as to set up HR systems and processes, supporting iwi members to build governance capability and experience through entities such as council controlled organisations by shadowing existing members, attending training and being appointed to boards. The next stage of this project will involve implementing these opportunities with partners. Aotearoa's experts from Niwa, GNS and Becker are collaborating and leading the charge to build understanding of our exposure to climate change. Their work will form our Regional Climate Change Impacts Assessment Project. Kia ora koutou. I'm Matt Rayburn from Becca, and I'm one of the technical specialists delivering the Wellington Regional Climate Change Impacts Assessment. This stage of the project is due to be completed by the end of 2022 will help to inform climate change adaptation and mitigation plans for the region going forward. We're undertaking the Regional Climate Change Impacts Assessment to develop a regionally consistent approach to assessing and ultimately addressing climate risks so it can be used by all regional stakeholders to plan for climate change impacts. Our BECA-led team has partnered with many of New Zealand's top climate change specialists from NIWA, GNS Science, and Victoria University's Judy Lawrence and Elon Noy to work with our partners to carry out this assessment. We will develop a digital tool and provide partners with in-house training 
so that partners are able to work with a consistent climate change hazard assessment tool going forward. The approach is informed by a lot of existing data that will be applied spatially to activities for the region so that interrelated risks can be assessed and accounted for. Importantly for the region's future, it will also help to identify areas of protection and where to limit growth as part of regional climate adaptation. The Climate Change Impacts Assessment will help to inform decisions about how to best respond to climate change impacts, including how to avoid, mitigate, or manage associated social, environmental, cultural, and economic consequences. It will prepare our communities in the region to be more adaptable, resilient, and prepared in the face of climate-related changes. We want to understand how our communities will be affected and investigate what this will look like for each specific part of the region. To complete the impacts assessment, we are developing a methodology in partnership with Manafeno of the region to ensure our response is informed by Mataranga Maori. We're consolidating existing data and identifying data gaps to support this assessment. We're developing a methodology for undertaking an assessment that is innovative, enduring, and scalable in line with current best practice to inform spatial planning decisions. Knowledge is power. The more we know about the potential risks our region is exposed to, the better equipped we will be to respond to them, both for our generation and for those to come. Another vital climate change project in our work program is the Regional Emissions Reduction Strategy. Kia ora, my name is Jack Rose, and I've been leading the delivery of Stage 1 of the Regional Emissions Reduction Strategy. The overall goal of this project is to develop a regionally agreed plan to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the region, in line with what is required. The first stage of this project is a technical emission stock take for the region to create baseline data. This stock take involved a comprehensive review of the plans of the partners and others in the region, how they influence emissions, their existing plans and commitments to reduce emissions, and other plans they have that might cause emissions to rise instead. The Stage 1 Emission Stock Take Report identified seven gaps and opportunities in how the region can reduce its emissions. We hope to see the region incorporate some new ideas and approaches to the problem of rising emissions. The Regional Emissions Reduction Strategy, which will begin in the second half of 2022, will be designed to inform and support the region to grow in a low emissions way, with a sea change in such things as our transport options and thus choices, what we consume, what and how we build and where we get our energy. Stage two of this project will involve lots of engagement with key stakeholders and interested parties in each of the areas relevant for emissions reduction, such as transport, waste, and building and construction. This project links strongly to the overall objective of accommodating population growth. Our biggest opportunity is for us to do things differently and ensure the demands of a growing population don't cause emissions to grow too. The climate can't take the strain of this and we'll all pay the price in the form of increasing extreme weather and its knock-on effects on our health and prosperity. We've got to get this right, together. Another regional project is our Regional Economic Development Plan Project. Here are Stuart and Julia to tell us more about this. Kia ora tato, ko Stuart Taylor toko ingoa. Ko Julia Stevens toko ingoa. We're from Wellington, New Zealand, the Economic Development Agency, and we're pulling together the Regional Economic Development Plan on behalf of the region. The plan aims to create some of the 100,000 new decent jobs required for our growing population, improve quality of life by supporting our region to be more productive, resilient, inclusive, sustainable, and supporting Māori and Pacifica thriving communities, and elevate approximately 20 to 40 initiatives that are going to make a difference from a sub-regional or regional perspective. The Leadership Committee's vision is to build a future-focused, creative, sustainable and thriving region for all to be proud of. We are collectively aiming for a better quality of life and world in its broadest sense for our children and our makapuna. There are five strategic objectives which are to be a leader of change, utilising our competitive advantage in key sectors, to build a prosperous and creative region to improve our quality of life. Te ahi karoa will enhance and empower the takiwa of te opoko o te ika. To build our workforce and resilience in our infrastructure. Support a transition to a low carbon economy and responsibly manage our natural resources for future generations. The plan will highlight issues and opportunities for our key sectors 
and some of the initiatives that are ready and can be supported to address these. It will create new opportunities for our diverse residents to apply their skills to meaningful employment and be rewarded fairly for it, contributing to the well-being of our communities. Our biggest challenge is that our region is very diverse with a mix of both urban and rural communities and industries within them. The growth challenges are often complex and require alignment of multiple councils, EUE, business stakeholders and central government. Identifying implementation pathways and leveraging funding from other sources is going to be essential. The plan is a living document that will evolve and adapt as projects are completed, conditions change, relationships are built and new initiatives are identified. Ultimately, it's about creating new jobs and improving quality of life for all, which is best achieved by working collectively and collaboratively as one region. Finally, a new project for us, working in partnership across a range of complex development opportunities. We need to address some big issues in our region, especially in housing, impacts of climate change, economic development and employment opportunities. For the Wellington Regional Leadership Committee, our priorities are the provision of affordable housing, including enabling Māori housing aspirations, regional economic development, climate change mitigation, enabling and encouraging mode shift, and doing all of this in a way that protects and enhances the natural environment. There are many projects that are currently either in train or being planned to address this, over 30 in fact. The challenge is that some of these projects are complex. They need lots of different players in a team and a lot of planning and collective decision making. We need people who are not just involved, but engaged. And we need to move at pace. We don't have the luxury of time where we can't agree, or we find that our plans don't work because they don't work with somebody else's, or we don't know who can make key decisions. We'll do so much better when we work together. We need this arrangement right at the start of the project. So after a thorough process, we've identified seven of the most complex projects that will most significantly contribute to addressing the big issues of our region. We've created a special partnership arrangement with central government agencies and other project partners to ensure the successful delivery. These are our complex development opportunities, or CDOs. These CDOs are also known as priority development areas and they operate in many other parts of Aotearoa. They are all projects that have the potential to deliver significant housing or other benefits to the region. They are in key locations where successful development supports and gives effect to our regional objectives. They're complex, so working a partnership is required to deliver at the desired pace and scale. You can expect to see these projects working in a different way and we really look forward to reporting progress to you. We've partnered together to be the voice on and for our regional challenges. To effectively address these, we have to collectively focus our effort. That's the real benefit of this committee, connecting central government, local government and iwi into the biggest joint committee in New Zealand. Bringing our collective experience, expertise and resources to bear on issues that matter to the region, to positively shape our future. Hewaka waka e noa. We are all in this together.